One more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We can sing God's got a blessing with the name on it since that was already rolling. Let's go ahead and keep that on because I know I got a blessing with my name on it. Hallelujah. I'm standing in the need of some things that I need God to do. Not tomorrow, not next week, but today. Hallelujah. So if you believe that God's got a blessing with your name on it, come on and stand to your feet and help me sing this song today. Come on, put your hands together today. Come on, let's have some church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, I can hear y'all out there. I know we got the mask on. Let me see them smiles out there. Hallelujah. Makes no difference what you're going through. You're going to make it. God's going to see you through. So hold your head up, put a smile on your face, for this is another test, it won't last always, so get ready for your blessings, get ready for your miracles, oh, get ready for your blessings, get ready for your miracles. I've been hurting deep down inside. I'm going to encourage me. It's going to be all right. Troubles and trials, they come to make me strong. I am going to believe. I'm going to hold on to get ready for my blessings. Come on, talk to yourself. Get ready for my miracles. For my blessing, get ready for your miracle. Listen, I know you've been hurting deep down inside. Let me encourage you, it's gonna be all right. Troubles and trials, they come to make us strong. You keep hold, believing, you keep holding. For your blessing, get ready for your miracle. Oh, get ready for your blessing, get ready for your miracle. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm ready for my blessing. I'm waiting for the manifestations of the Lord on today. How many of you waiting for his manifestation on today? Hallelujah. Come on and help me sing this part and let God know that we are ready. Oh, God's got a blessing. Oh, God's got a blessing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Oh. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. With my name on it. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. With my name on it. With my name. myself today. So how about you encourage your neighbor today and let your neighbor know that God's got a blessing with their name on it today. Come on and help me sing it to your neighbor today. God's got a blessing. All right, that's all right. You can talk to him. God's got a blessing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. God's got a blessing. Oh, God's got a blessing. All of y'all back there in the back, listen. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. With your name on it. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's 
God's got a blessing. With your name on it. With your name on it. Got your name on it. Got your name on it. Got your name on it. Praise the Lord. Come on, put those hands together. If you know that God got it with your name on it. Everybody standing to your feet all over the building as we get ready to hear what the Spirit has to say unto the church on today. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together. Praise God for one of God's anointed men, none other than Pastor David King Cannon. Put your hands together as he comes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, throw those hands up. Throw that head back. I'm going to count to three, and I want you to give God your best praise. One, two, three, shout. Let's do it one more time just to make the devil mad. Is that all right? Throw those hands up. Throw that head back. One, two, three, shout. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We just appreciate the Lord today. Amen. Appreciate God for that great solo. Amen. That we just received. Amen. God got a blessing with your name on it. Amen. I believe that. How many believe that God has a blessing with your name on it? If you believe that, it's going to come to pass. Is that right? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we appreciate you. Hallelujah.
love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you, I lift you up, and I magnify your name. Lord, that's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart, my mind, my soul, my heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. You paid the price for me way back on Calvary. That's why I praise you, I lift you up, and I magnify your name, Lord. That's why my heart is filled with praise. One more time, my heart, my mind, my soul. Oh, my heart, my mind, my heart, my mind, my soul belongs. To you, you paid the price for me. Way back on Calvary, that's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name, Lord. That's why my heart is filled. 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 That's why my heart is filled with praise. Hallelujah. Amen. We appreciate God. Amen. For allowing us to come into the house of the Lord one more time. We appreciate God for God being God all by himself. Thank God for his son Jesus, the Savior of the world. We appreciate God for the Holy Ghost, whereby we'll see you unto the day of redemption. Amen. We honor the chief apostle, founder, and general overseer of this great ministry, Apostle Darrell Glenn McCoy, and the elect lady in their absences today. We appreciate God so much for the man of God. Amen. We appreciate God for all these great men of God. Thank God. Amen. For Elder Brandon. Amen. Elder Green. Prophet Green. Amen. And, uh, Elder Brown, amen, all the men of God, amen, all the ministers of the gospel, amen. We appreciate God for you and your elect ladies. We thank God so much for you. Thank God for the mother of this great ministry here in Jacksonville, Florida, Mother Jones, amen. We appreciate God so much for her, seeing her, amen, in the house of the Lord, amen. We honor the elect lady of the house there and Augusta G.A., Sister Mary King Cannon, amen, role partner, amen, just Amen. The love of my life. Amen. We thank God so much for her. Amen. We thank God for all the prophetess. Amen. Handmaidens of the Lord. Amen. Daughters of Zion. Mothers in Zion. All the mothers. Amen. In the house of the Lord. We appreciate God for you. And just all the saints. Amen. All the visitors. Any visitors that may be here. We thank God for you being in the house. Amen. And all our deacons. Amen. Amen. Just everybody. Amen. In your uh, respectful places. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. We honor him today. We're not going to. David King Cannon is not going to be before you long. But I don't know what David Christ is going to do. Is that all right? But David King Cannon says we're going to get out of here real, real quick. Amen. We're going to do what we have to do and move on out of the way. But we thank God. Amen. How many enjoyed that great convocation that we have? A wonderful time. Amen. Appreciate God. Amen. For the man of God. Amen. Even on those. Uh, noonday uh, teaching sessions, amen, how it just really broke the word of God down, amen, so that we can 
digested, amen, and live a fruitful life in the Lord. Is that all right? And I thank God so much for him and just all the men of God, amen, that ministered to him that week, amen. Truly, we had a wonderful time. Thank God for seeing our Jacksonville family, amen, in uh, Augusta, Georgia, amen. I didn't get a chance to talk to, you know, everybody like I wanted to, but I appreciate God so much for you all, amen, being in that great convocation. We pray that your stay, amen, Augusta, amen, was fruitful, amen, and that you got treated like you all to be treated, amen, like a king and a queen, is that right? So we appreciate God. If it didn't happen, we're going to see that it happened the next time, amen. But we love the Lord, amen. We appreciate God for each and every one of you. We're not going to prolong the time, but we're going to get into the word of the Lord, amen. We appreciate God so much. You know, I just had to pray, amen, because the little uh, spirit, amen, of just, what do you call it, just hurting yourself, some little little spirit. I had to rebuke that spirit, amen. Wednesday night, amen, uh, should have let him go on and take my bag to the car, but I said, no, you know, when we got there, I got it and put it in there and then raised up, and put a big bump on the side of my head. Got here today, amen, and, uh, you know, any of the old school men know about those double-edged razors, and that's what I use them, double-edged razors, amen, and I was looking for something in my bag and just poked my hand down there and just sliced my finger open back there, and it bled like a stuck hog, but... When we put that word on it, when I passed by the insolvent polluted in our own blood, I said, you live. When I passed by the insolvent polluted in our own blood, I said, live, amen, and the bleeding stopped. Amen, my wife wrapped it up. Amen, you know, I had to act like a little baby there for a little bit just to get some attention. You know how that is. Make it worse, seem worse than what it is, amen, just for her to put some TLC in it, amen. But she even had to put the all on my hair so I can comb my hair. And, you know, I just really went on I, all out today. Amen. She helped me put my clothes on. Usually I do it myself. She got everything out for me, and I'm just sitting back grinning. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we appreciate the Lord. Amen. It ain't nothing wrong. Amen. Some, you know, some, sometimes I have to act like that to get more attention. Amen. I appreciate the attention. Amen. And, you know, I, she used to be the real affectionate type, you know. She, she used to be a crybaby, amen, when we first got married. And I had to toughen her up and bring her out of that crying and stuff. But now I didn't turn into a crybaby. <laughs> so I can get some attention, amen. But I appreciate God, amen, for my wife, amen, and her being there. She said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's going to stop bleeding. It's going to stop bleeding. And so Wednesday night, amen, it'll be going to bump. Came and she said, put that all on it, and I prayed for it, and by the time we got home, that bump was gone, amen. She said, I rebuke any scar in anything, amen, and put that all on it, and there's no scar, amen, it's down, and I just appreciate God, and I had to rebuke that little demon, amen, just that little thing that's set on you sometimes, but I appreciate God so much, amen, for his faithfulness, amen. Amen. Out of all that we go through and the things that we have to face, amen, God is yet faithful. And we appreciate God so much for him. Thank God, amen, for the praise team, amen, and the, these wonderful musicians, amen, doing such a wonderful job. Amen. Once again, we thank God for Sister Green doing such a wonderful job, amen, on that song. God got a blessing with your name on it, amen. And I appreciate God so much for him because my name is on a blessing. I know it is. Amen. I'm getting ready to go into the word of the Lord. Amen. And this is something that I preached in Augusta. Amen. Before the sun Sunday before convocation. And I believe, amen, that it'll be a blessing to you today. Amen. And we're just going to believe God, amen, for him to just do what he wants to do and say what he wants to say. So let's go in prayer. Father, we do thank you today, Lord. We appreciate you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, oh God. Lord, as I often say, I'm as a child, I don't know how to go in by myself or come out by myself, except you lead me in and out, oh God. Father, today I come to preach by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus, through faith in his name. Lord God, we come and we take total and complete dominion over Satan. Lord, we take authority over him, Lord. We render him helpless, harmless, and ineffective in this service today, Lord God. 
Lord, we take total and complete dominion, Lord. We stand in the dominion, Lord God, that you've given us, Lord. And we appreciate you so much, Lord God. Father, this day, Lord God, I ask, Lord God, for perfect comprehension of your word, perfect recall, and a quick understanding of your word, oh God. Lord, to you be the glory today, Lord. I'm nothing, Lord God, but you're everything, oh God. Lord, I decrease, Lord God, as you increase, oh God. Lord, take control, Lord God, take control. I thank you, Lord God. Father, I thank you so much today, Lord God. Lord, I thank you so much today, oh God. Lord, we appreciate you, Lord God, for this time, Lord God. Lord, that you've afforded us today, oh God. Lord, I thank you so much, Lord. I thank you so much, Lord God. Lord, I ask that you forgive every sin in my life, oh God. Anything that's not pleasing to you, Lord God, I ask, Lord, that you lay the ax to the root, Lord, and that you root it out, root it out today, Lord God. And, Lord, we'd be so careful, Lord, to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Lord, I ask today for the spirit of wisdom and revelation into the knowledge of Jesus Christ, that the eyes of my understanding be enlightened, that I may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And so we thank you so much this day, Lord God. Now, sweet spirit of God, we invite you into this house. We invite you into this place today. Go down every aisle and in and out of every pew. Rest upon us this day. We can do nothing without you. We can't walk. We can't talk. We can't think. We can't live without you. And so we ask today that you take total and complete control. You have your divine way. Sweet Spirit of God, I want to host you this day. I want to host you this day. Thank you that you live in me. You're up on me and you're beside me. Thank you that your presence goes before me. Your presence is up on me and around me, thick and heavily, Lord God. And I give you glory, honor, and praise for it, Lord. We give you thanksgiving. We give you thanksgiving. I yield my total being to you this day. Have your divine way. You be glorified, Lord God. You be glorified in this place. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, and they all shouted. And thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. We're going to go, amen, first of all, amen, to, um, let me see, verse, the book of uh, 2 Timothy, very important scripture, amen, you've read it before, you've heard it before, but I don't want this scripture to escape my spirit, amen, uh, escape what I believe. So I believe when we get a hold of this scripture, regardless of what we go through, amen, uh, there won't be any fear. Is that right? And if fear happens to come, amen, then it will be alleviated quickly. Is that right? And we understand this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, let's let's uh, go to verse number three, and then we'll read down. I didn't intend to do it that way, but. That's what the Lord is putting in my spirit. It says, I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. And if you would take, and this is the Apostle Paul talking to Timothy, but if you would go to the book of Ephesians and even, amen, in the book of Colossians, you'll find out, amen, that the Apostle Paul prays, amen, for the saints quite often. He said, I remember you in my prayers. Amen. He didn't just talk about it, amen, but he said, I remember you in my prayers. In the book of Ephesians, chapter number one, he talks about, amen, when I uh, heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and love unto all the saints, I cease not to make mention of you in my prayers. Are you in the house? So, so the Apostle Paul was a praying man. You know, he was a man, a man that knew God. And uh, in the book of uh, Philippians chapter number four, how it says, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul knew something. He knew something. And why didn't he say, uh, your God 
shall supply all you need according to your, his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. One reason I believe is because the Apostle Paul had a relationship, amen, with the Father. Had a relationship with the Son, Jesus Christ. And so he, he's able to say, I don't know about you, but because of the relationship that I've had with the Son and what I know about the Father, amen, and the things that I've been through, you know, you understand how he was shipwrecked, amen, how he was beat with rods, amen, who was in the deep so, such, such a, for a while, amen, and, and perils by his countrymen and perils in the deep, amen. And so there was a lot of things happening with him. So what I'm saying, amen, is you, you, when, when you have a relationship, amen, with Jesus Christ, when you have a relationship with the Spirit of God, amen, regardless of what goes on, are you here? Regardless of what trouble, what trial. Now, I'm just going to take my time just for a little bit. Regardless of what trial, what tribulation that you go through because of the relationship, amen. Relationship, amen, is very important, amen. You know, I had to have a relationship with my wife. And I'm talking about a real intimate relationship. Are you here? Amen. Before marriage, I'm not talking about a real intimate relationship, but I had to know something about her. Are you in the house in order to know, amen, if this is the one, amen, that God uh, has for me, amen, in marriage. Are you here? And so you, you get a ch I, I got a chance to know her and got a chance to find out how she think and how she carries herself. Are you here? What she like, what she don't like. Are you here? So I, 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 I generated or I had uh, uh, a relationship with her, amen, to 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 find out who she was. And when I found out who she was and what she liked and what she didn't like, then I knew how to navigate around her. Are you here? And I knew how to handle her. Are you in the house? And so that's the way it is with the apostle Paul. He had such a relationship with God. Amen. Peter said he uh, uh, preached things, amen, that were hard to be understood. Amen. That's what the apostle Peter said. Amen. Because he had such a deep revelation of the things of God. Amen. And he said, I didn't go up to Jerusalem to those that were apostles before me. He said, but what I got, amen, I got by the revelation of Jesus Christ. What are you saying? Jesus appeared to him himself. Are you here? And begin to teach the Apostle Paul and begin to show the Apostle Paul and begin to open up the revelation of the word of God, amen, to the Apostle Paul. So the Apostle Paul knew the realness of God Almighty. Are you here? He knew that it wasn't just a figment of his imagination because he was stopped on the way, in the way, amen. And he saw a light shine and bright and heard a voice, amen, saying, Saul, Saul, why kicketh thou against the pricks? Are you here? He, and, and so, in other words, why are you fighting against the high powers when he was on his way taking, amen, saints to have them massacred and murdered, amen? Jesus stopped him in the way, are you in the house? And so, the apostle Paul had a relationship. He knew, amen, the severity of God as well as the loving, tender kindness of God. He also knew, amen, that there was a wrath side of God as well as a side of love, are you here? So, you know, when we talk about, amen, uh, the fear of God, amen, we, we fear God, amen, it is a reverence of God, but then we, we look and we honor his omnipotence, are you here? We honor his omnipresence, are you here? And, and, and we honor, amen, his, his, his uh, 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 omniscience, are you here? His all-knowing. And that's where the apostle Paul was, amen, he knew God, are you here? He knew God. He knew, amen, the blessedness of the word. He knew, amen, amen, uh, he was in that place with God. And the apostle Paul even, amen, he was in such a place with God. Are you here? He said, he said, I want to go away and be with him. Are you here? But it's more needful for me to be here with you. For me to live is gain for you, but for me to die is glory. Can I get a praise him? And so he said, I got to be here with you for because he understood God. He knew, amen, when his course was over. He knew, amen, amen, when it was time for him, amen, to take his flight. Are you here? And so he did everything that he could do in the season that he had here on this earth, amen, to win souls for the kingdom. Are you here? And to raise up elders, amen, to ordain elders in every city, amen. That was the 
the, what the apostle Paul's job was, amen, to raise up people unto God. Oh, you hear? And so, amen, he took and he established things. He established people in the faith. He, he taught and preached, amen, so that they, they could be rooted, they could be grounded, oh, you hear? Amen. In the word of God so that no matter what wind of doctrine may blow, amen, amen, it wouldn't shake them off their foundation. Amen. The apostle Paul began to talk, amen, over in the book of Ephesians chapter number four, amen. And when he said, amen, that's why, amen, there's apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, amen, amen, for the perfecting of the saints, for the edifying of the body, till we all come into the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, grow into the knowledge of the, uh, the stature and fullness of Jesus Christ. That was what, amen, his job was, amen, but he knew who Jesus was, amen. He got stopped in the way, are you here? And he heard the voice of God, and he knew it wasn't a figment of his imagin imagination. Are you in the house of the Lord? Amen. Those that were with him, amen, they saw the light, amen, but they didn't hear the voice like the apostle Paul heard, amen. And so the reason why the apostle Paul could say, amen, that my God, amen, I don't know about you, but I've been there before. I know what he can do. I know what he's capable of doing. I know he's able to bring me out. And so I can say in the face of whatever you're going through, my God, because I have a relationship with him, shall, oh, you here, supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Is that all right? So it goes on and say, amen, I'm praying for you. My prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I do, when I call to remember the unfeigned faith, that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance of remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hand. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift that is in thee. Amen. That you have, amen, by the putting on of my hands, amen, stir up the gift, stir up the gift, that thing, amen, that's been imparted unto you, that has been imparted, I want you to stir that up. And so he has to go, amen, in this next verse, he said, for God have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And the reason why I say this, amen, is because, amen, Timothy was a timid young man. He was very timid, are you here? And so he had the gift of God on the inside of him, are you here? And so the apostle Paul is reminding him of some things. You've got a gift on the inside of you, and I want you to stir it up. He said, but, how, but he said, let him know that God has not given you the spirit of fear, regardless to what you encounter, are you here? God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, are you here? And so this is what he's trying to say and what I'm trying to say to each and every one of us of where we're going today and the word of the Lord God has not given us the spirit of fear are you here regardless of what you encounter in life amen regardless of how boisterous the storm is in your life amen you don't have to fear amen because when you understand amen that you are in covenant relationship and we talked about covenant relationship once before God does not break covenant are you in the house he does not break covenant and every time amen and I see amen the elements here amen set out today and to where we have communion amen that brings us back into uh, the understanding of covenant are you here God does not break covenant amen when he cut covenant with Abraham hallelujah in the house amen he cut covenant with Abraham and Abraham laid out the sacrifice. Amen. That was being sacrificed and he was walked the covenant with God. And when God solidified that covenant, when Abraham went to sleep, God walked the covenant himself. Amen. Because man is weak. Man would come out of the covenant. But if God cut covenant with himself, there's no possible way. Amen. That that covenant would fall to the ground. And he made covenant with us. And I'm going somewhere. Just hold on for a minute. He cut covenant with Abraham. Amen. And let him know blessing. I'm going to bless you multiplying. I'm going to multiply you. Amen. Your seed is going to be as the sea, as the, as the, the sand by the seashore. And if you if you can count the stars as how great your seed is going to be. And this, your seed is not going to come from this Eliezer. But 
you don't have a seed from your own bowels, and if you've read the word of God, and you know the word of God is true, amen, it came out just like God cut covenant with Abraham. Are you in the house? And this, as God, amen, and we're in covenant relationship with him. Hallelujah. And we honor the covenant, amen, every time we take communion. We honor it, and that's a sign, Lord, that I believe you. And whatever you said, God, I trust you that it's going to come to pass. Is that all right? Thank you, Lord Jesus. So we get ready to go on into the word of the Lord. Amen. To the book, amen, Hallelujah. of Colossians chapter number one. Very, very familiar passages of scriptures, amen. Colossians chapter number one, or are you in the house? But first, before we do that, we need to go to Genesis chapter number one. Are you here? Very familiar passage, amen. One of the springboard uh, verses that the apostle, amen, springs off of a whole lot, amen. And I believe that it's viable for today as well. Is that right? Amen. The book of Genesis, amen, chapter, amen, number one and verse number, amen, 26, uh, uh, amen. And the Bible reads like this. We're getting ready to get on down the line. And the Bible says, and God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him, male and female. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, amen, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So God, amen, spoke to him a couple of times, amen, about what he had dominion over. Are you here? Amen. And any time God speak about something, he say something, repeat himself two times, amen, it's all already sealed, amen. This is what God wants us to get a hold of. Is that right? So if we go to the book of uh, uh, Genesis, amen, chapter number two, verse number seven, and God formed man the dust of the earth, amen, and breathed into the nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Is that all right? And so it's something in man, but it's something to put in man. And if you read the word of God, the Bible would begin to tell how that before Jesus sent, amen, his disciples out two by two, amen, the Bible said he breathed on them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Is that right? Amen. To the book of Colossians chapter number one. Amen. The book of Colossians chapter number one. And when you get it, just say amen. And we're going to be out of your way directly. Is that right? Hallelujah. Just trying to uh, put something in our hearing real, real quick before I get out of your way. Is that all right? Amen. So uh, the book of uh, Colossians chapter number one. Amen. We're going to begin reading. Amen. At verse uh, number 24. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you. And fill up that which is behind of the f afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his, for his bondage sake, which is the church. And if you read, amen, Ephesians chapter number one, amen, uh, you go on into the body, amen, and begin to say that Jesus is the head of the church. Are you in the house of the Lord? So, he, so the apostle Paul is just coming back again, make a note of that. It says, wherefore, uh, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Are you in the house? Even the mystery which is, have been hid from ages and generations, but now was made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance, of the, the riches of the glory of this mystery, among the Gentiles, and he's saying something here, amen. He's trying to, trying to give us a hint of something, are you here? Amen. Among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Can I get a praiser? Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ. Can I get a shout of praise up in the house? The book of Matthews, amen. Chapter number six, verse number 33. Amen. We're going to read a few verses, amen, and go down to it. Very familiar passage, but, you know, God's given me different revelation. Amen. 
It says, verse number 28, And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the, the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast in the oven, I'm going somewhere in just a minute, so he not much more clothe ye, you, O ye of little faith. Therefore take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things. God has a blessing with your name on it. Shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Have you got that? Amen. The, the evil thereof. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. To the book of Matthew, that same uh, book, I mean, to the chapter 13. Chapter 13. We're going to read these scriptures, then we're going to talk about it just a little bit. Is that all right? Chapter 13, verse number 44. When you get it, say amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're going to read down, amen, uh, 44. It says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he had it, and for joy, therefore, goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had, and bought it. Have you got it? I'm going to stop right there. And bought it. Went and sold all that he had and bought it. Can I get a praise in the house? Amen. To the book, amen, of uh, St. Matthew's, amen, chapter number 6. Back to chapter 6 again. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's going to be good for us. Chapter number 6, verse number 10. And what are you going to say? Amen. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. Are you here? Verse number 13. Hallelujah. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Is that all right? The book of St. Luke. Amen. The book of St. Luke. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Chapter 17. St. Luke chapter 17, I got one more, and then we're going to be through. Is that all right? St. Luke chapter 17. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Chapter 17 and verse 21. Hallelujah. 20 and 21. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Can I get a praise? Sir? The kingdom of God is within you. Chapter num Romans chapter number 14. The book of Romans chapter number 14. And we'll be through. Romans chapter number 14. And give me about 15 minutes and I'm going to let you go. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Romans chapter number 14. Verse number 17, I'm sorry. It says, for the kingdom of God is not meat nor drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Is that all right? Amen. I believe that the Lord has given me, amen, this word, amen, that I'm ministering to you today, amen, is because of the hour in which we live. Amen. There are people, amen, we've talked about, amen, uh, just a few minutes ago, uh, we talked about relationship. And we talked about uh, intimacy, amen. And what God wants, amen, is to have that relationship, amen, with him. Are you in the house of the Lord? 
to know, amen, that all things are working together for our good. Is that right? Look at your neighbor and say, God has a blessing with your name on it. Is that right? And so I have to understand, amen, we have to understand the word of God, amen. The Bible talked about how, amen, that God uh, made us in his image and his likeness, and he gave us dominion in this earth Are you here. When man was formed, amen, amen, he was formed in the image and in the likeness of God. Amen. He was, he was made, amen, to act like God, to, to move like God, to do like God. Are you here? Amen. Not, we're not talking about, amen, physical, amen, physical, but we're talking about the spirit of man, amen. It's just like God. Are you here? Hello, even though we have, amen, this physical natural body, amen, amen, the housing of the Holy Ghost. Are you here? Amen. It's, it's the spirit of God that's on the inside of us. Amen. The real you is on the inside of us. And somewhere, amen, along the way we've got lost, amen, and the translation of things of you here, of who, amen, lives on the inside of us and who we are, amen. We are not just has-beens of you here. We're not just here, amen, uh, going about our happy-go-lucky way of you here. But we're here for a purpose of you here. We're here to do the will of the bidding of God in this hour you hear. We're here, amen, to carry on, amen, hallelujah, the work, amen, that Jesus left behind for us to do. Jesus said, I'm going away where I'm going. You can't come now. But if I go not away, the comforter won't come. But if I go away, I'll send the comforter, you hear. Amen. It jumps back down, amen, in the book of St. John, chapter number 16. When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he shall guide you, amen, to all truth or into all realities. He won't speak of himself, but whatever he hears, that's what he he will speak, amen. Hallelujah. He'll speak that and he will show you things to come. Can I get a praise? And so we have to understand that God has given us the Holy Ghost, amen, for this hour, amen. Are you here? And so, amen. Hallelujah. When man was formed, amen, there was no sin in his life. Hallelujah. There was no sin in his life. God created him, hallelujah, in his image and in his likeness, amen. Hallelujah. And gave him dominion, are you here? Hallelujah. He understood, amen. He knew nothing about evil. All he knew, amen, was the goodness and the blessedness of God. Hallelujah. That's all he knew. Hallelujah. And God, amen, spoke to him. And he said, whatever you call these animals, all this stuff, amen, that's what the name is going to be. And so God, amen, gave him his mind. And so that's why when I pray, amen, I said, God, hallelujah, I thank you. You said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, who is it that can instruct the Lord, but we have the mind of Christ of you here. And so every day, amen, I take on that mind. I say, God, let me operate with your mind, with the mind of Christ, because I only want to do, amen, what I see you do and say what I hear you say. Can I get a thank you, Jesus, person in the house today? Hello, and that's what I want, amen. I'm trying, amen, right now. I want to be conformed to his image of you here. Hello, in the book, amen, of First Corinthians chapter number 15. He said, if we've taken on the image of the earthly, amen, we'll also take on the image of the heavenly. Can I get a praise? And so I'm trying to come back into alignment with God. Are you here? I'm trying to get in that place. Are you here? To where I look just like him. When people see me, they see him. Can I get a praise? Amen. One of the disciples said, amen, show us the Father. And Jesus said, have I not been with you so long? and you yet haven't seen the Father. You don't know the Father. He said, when you see me, you see the Father. You're in the house of the Lord. And so I'm trying to get to that place, amen, to where I talk like him, where I think like him, where I walk like him, where I operate like him. Are you in the house of the Lord? For when, amen, whatever circumstance, whatever problem comes up, the storms of life can come up on you here. And I operate just like Jesus. I stay calm, cool, and collective and begin to speak to the storm in my life are you here and cause them in a turnaround in my life I dare somebody to shout glory in the house. I'm going somewhere today in the house of the Lord are you here and so amen you look at the word of God amen when 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 
the animals fall on the year. God, amen, blew himself, his, his breath in his nostrils, and so God came inside him, and God was up on him. And the apostle McCall said, amen, he was molded, amen, out of God and from God. And so, amen, he had, amen, he had no sin in his life. He knew no sin. So he walked in the power, and he walked in the authority of God. That's why I said, Adam, I'm giving you this garment. I want you to do this garden. I want you to dress it, and I want you to keep it. Are you here? I'm giving you the authority, amen, to keep out anything foreign. Any foreign entity should not ever enter into this garden. Are you in the house of the Lord? And that yet stands true to this day. Are you in the house of the Lord? Because of who we are and because of whose we are, we don't understand, amen, the valuableness that God has placed upon our lives. Can I get a shout of praise up in the house of the Lord? I'm going somewhere. Just hold on just for a minute. Amen. And so, amen, all for the word of God. Amen. And when Jesus, amen, began to step on the scene. Amen. Hallelujah. The pastor, the John spoke up and said, behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. And Jesus came to John and said, John, I must be baptized of you. And John said, not so. Amen. I, I need to be baptized with the baptism that you have. But Jesus said, uh-uh, something to be so, amen, so that we can fool all righteousness. Can I get a praiser in the house of the Lord? Amen. And so John took and baptized Jesus, took him in the water, came up out of the water. And the Bible said that there was, a, was the Holy Ghost came down upon, amen, Jesus in the shape of form of a dove. Then he heard a voice saying, then out of heaven, this is my beloved son and whom I'm well pleased. Can I get a shout of praise up in this house today? Hallelujah. And so, amen, he's trying to show us, amen, that it's essential, amen, in this hour to have power. It's essential in this hour to walk in authority because can I help you understand, saints, it's going to get darker and it's going to get darker. Can I get a praise? You have not seen darkness yet. You've not seen trouble yet. Are you here? You've not seen pain in this world yet. Are you? You've not seen suffering in this world yet. Amen. We're in the hour, amen. Oh, but good God Almighty. We're in an hour, amen, when things are rapidly, amen, increasing. Things are getting more evil. Are you here? People are getting more wickeder in this hour. Can I get a praise up in this house, amen? When you can take, amen, and molest a baby, a grown man, molest a baby, amen, and kill a baby, molesting a baby, something's wrong in this nation. Are you here? Something's wrong in this world. I wish I had a praise right now. It's so bad, amen, that people will shoot you down and say, amen, that the Lord told them, amen, to do it, that they're doing the Lord God of service. Come on, lift your hand and glorify God. So we're in those hours. We're in, amen, the hour, amen, that tries a little, little soul. Can I get a praise in the house of the Lord? Are you here? And the, the Bible said because of sin, because of iniquity, amen, that's in the world, amen, the love of many will wax cold. Saints of God, amen. We've got to stay in the word. We've got to con depend upon the Holy Ghost in this hour. Can I get a point? Because the Bible was set for sin abound. Sin is going to get more sinful. Or people going to get more sinful. Or are you more wicked? Or are you here? We're in the days, amen, of Noah. We're in the days, amen, of Lot, amen, of Sodom and Gomorrah. Are you here? Amen. But people don't have a conscience now. Come on, lift your hands and shout glory. Amen. Where preachers are falling like dominoes. How dare somebody give him a praise in the house of the Lord? Have we got to have something, amen? We got to have more than what we had yesterday. Amen. Every day, amen, we got to ask for more. Every day, amen, we got to seek God like never before. How dare somebody to give him a praise in the house of the Lord? If we don't, if we don't, we're going to fall like dominoes. If we don't, we are open prey to the enemy. Come on, lift your hand and glorify God. If we don't go after God with everything that we have, amen, and seek him daily, not when we feel like it, are you here, but make it a daily routine that we come into the presence of God. That's the only way we're going to stand. That's the only way we're going to stand. Can I get a praise? And because of iniquity, the love of many right in the house of God, the love of, of people right here in the house of God has waxed cold. Come on, lift your hand. People to give you the cold 
shoulder in a moment. They won't lift uh, a finger to help you now, day. Come on, I dare somebody to shout glory in the house of the Lord. We're living in a time, amen. Hallelujah, hold you where we're being tried. The trying of your faith. We're in the time where we're being tried. He said you're going to be tried as silver. You're going to be tried as gold. Come on, lift your hand. You're going to be tried to find out if you wood, hay, stubble, of silver, or gold, or precious stone. Come on, lift your hands and shout glory. You're going to be tried to, with the thing that came out of your mouth. Amen. Toward people, come on. By every word, you're going to be justified that comes out of your mouth. Or by your words, you'll be condemned in this hour. Come on, I dare somebody to give him a praise. Are you here? But I'm here to tell you, I need more than what I got right now. I can't go by the anointing that I had yesterday. I got to fill up for the day. Are you here? I got to come before God. Amen. And ask God for more. Come on, I dare you to give him a praise in the house of the Lord. When the, when the disciples, amen, were being evilly entreated. Are you here? Amen. When they, when they beat them. Are you here? They beat them for the word of God and told them not to preach in that name again. Are you in the house of the Lord? Hello. And they went back to their company. Are you here? And that's why I'm saying you're going to need more than the, the more than you need today. If God let us live to see them all. And the Bible said when they went back to their company, they began to pray. And the place was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't you already have the Holy Ghost? Don't you already have the Holy Ghost? You got it on the day of Pentecost. What's going on now? You got another refilling. Come on, lift your hand and shout glory. They got another refilling. And that's what's going to happen to us day by day. Give us our daily bread. Day by day, give us a refilling of the power. Give us a refilling of your glory. Lift your hand and shout glory in the house of the Lord. Are you here? Thank God, Bahosha. Come on, children of God. I'm praying. And every day I begin to pray. Amen. God begin to say, tell my people to repent. Are you in the house of the Lord? He said, tell my people to repent. And I'm, I'm telling you today that the Lord said, repent. Hallelujah. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Come on and give God a praise up in this house. Are you here? Hallelujah. He said, repent. Amen. He said, tell them, oh, your Bahoya, that those that are long, have life luster are you here those amen that are relaxed amen in Zion come on that are at ease in Zion come on lift your hands and glorify God he said tell them that are lukewarm are you in the house amen to repent and come back to God I wish I kind of praise her right now in the house of the Lord it's time now to get on fire I'm asking God to rebaptize me with the Holy Ghost in fire I've got to have the fire now I've got to have more than what I got now I've got to have have the fire of the Holy Ghost in my life now. I lift your hands and shout glory in God's house. I've got to have more. I've got to have be on the cutting edge now. There's somebody waiting for you. There's somebody waiting for me. They want what you got. They want that anointing. They want the power of God. They want the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands and shout glory up in the house of the Lord. Are you here? And so, amen. We get in the word of the Lord, amen. Hallelujah. People, amen, are so one word, amen. We look at the book of, hallelujah, thank you, Lord Jesus. Matthew chapter number six, amen. Hallelujah. We're not concerned, amen, with the whole verse, amen. Matthew 6, 33, are you here? And he began to talk to us ahead, amen. He don't want us to put nothing before him, are you here? He don't want us to put fame, fortune, money. Hallelujah. Have a name plastered upon a beard. Lord, are you here? Won't people bowing down to us? Are you here? Hallelujah. But he said, if, if you want to be great, you got to be servant of all. If you want to be great, you got to become a servant. And the Holy Ghost will cause you to go down. The Holy Ghost will cause you not to think no highly, but you ought to think about yourself. Come on and give God a praise up in this house. Are you here? I'm asking God to help me to be meek, humble, and lowly. Are you here? I'm saying, God, I surrender everything that I am to you. Hallelujah. And that that I'm not. I want you to take it away. Come on. I want you to search my heart. Try the reins of my heart. If you find anything in me not like you, Lord, I want you to lay the axe to the root, and I want you to root it out. Come on. And give him praise in the house of the Lord. 
And so are you here? He's telling us, are you here? He don't want us to be caught up in money, amen. And I'm looking, amen, at the time that we're living in. This pandemic, are you here? Hello, I'm looking, amen, and I, I breeze, amen, across, amen, the word network, amen, and impact network. And they're still doing that money thing, are you here? Amen, this time for po people's soul to be saved, are you here? It ain't no time to just be talking about money, are you here? Because I'm like a apostle. Money can't save you. Money can't buy AIDS off. Money can't buy COVID off. Can I get a praise in the house? Money can't buy the devil off. But you got to have something on the inside of you that'll make the devil back away from you. Come on and lift your hands and praise God in the house. I've got to have more now than what I've ever had. Come on and give him praise up in the house. Thank you, Lord. And so, hallelujah, I'm looking at the word of God. And I'm looking at people, amen, that are going on like it's just an ordinary day. Come on, lift your hands and shout glory. But if you've been noticing something, amen, if you've been noticing something, you notice that it seems like the days are getting shorter. Seems like the weeks are coming so fast. Hallelujah, the house, the end of the year is coming so fast. Can you believe, amen, that the people have been locked down and not been able to do what they want to do for eight or nine months of you here and this year is just about over when people promise God Lord amen while I'm out amen at home on this pandemic in this pandemic I'm going to seek after you I'm going to turn my life around I'm going to run for you like never before and we promised God like the apostle said if we paid our tithe and our offering God was going to keep us can I get a praise hallelujah we were praying and said God we can't wait to get back to the house of God but when we got back to the house of God, the same old thing, the same old murmuring, the same old complaining, the same old lying, the same old cheating, the same old putting roadblocks and stumbling blocks in people's way, the same old thing, and that's why God is sending judgment, hello, it's going to start first at the house of God, and then it's going to start abroad, come on, I dare somebody give him praise up in this house, come on, shout glory in the house of the Lord. Are you here? Just in the days, like in the days of Noah. In the days of Lot, they were building. They were selling, they were buying. They were marrying, they were giving in marriage. We're in those same days where people are blinded to what's going on in this hour. Can I get a praise up in here? How the people are blinded. They're at ease in Zion. It's like, I mean, and some of the saints, they still don't know what's going on. Are you in the house? They're still in a bewilderment state. Can I get a praise? I mean, they don't know know that we're at the end of time. They don't know what's going on. They don't know, amen, if they're going to live. They don't know if they're going to get COVID and COVID going to take them out. They're living all kind of savvy lives, amen, instead of living a life under God. They're living a life to please themselves. Come on, lift your hands and shout, God. Jesus came not to please himself, but he came to please the Father, to bring us back to him. I dare somebody to shout glory in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And so I'm going to get the good of good news. And so are you in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah. He said, look at here. Hallelujah. My people, my people, I don't want you to worry about this trivial thing. Hallelujah. Food is trivial to God. Money is something trivial to God. I don't want you to think about your clothing that's trivial to God. Can I get a praise in the house of the Lord? But what I want you to do, I want you to seek my kingdom. I want you to seek my kingdom and my righteousness. First, come on, lift your hand. I said, I want you to see, I want you to seek my kingdom and my, my righteousness first. First, the kingdom of God and my righteousness. Are you here? I'm not worried about the other thing. I want my soul right. I'm not worried about the other thing. I want to walk up right before you. I'm not worried about the other thing. I want the power. I'm not worried about the other thing. I want to walk in authority. I'm not worried about the things of the world. I want Jesus. Lift your hands and shout glory in the house of the Lord. Come on, lift your hands and shout glory in the house of the Lord. And so he's saying here, he's saying here, I don't listen, listen, we're so far off base. We're so far off base. We're wondering and worrying about today. We're worrying about this world. We're caught up in this world system. We're caught up in politics. Come on, lift your hand. We're caught up in all that stuff. We're caught up in the presidency. Are you here? Can I help you understand? If we don't want what God well, God will give us what we want. Come on, lift your hands and shout, Lord. The children of Israel, amen, wanted a king. Come on, lift your hands. The children of Israel wanted a king, and God wanted to be their God. And they just kept crying out for a king. So God said, I'm the 
don't give you what you want, but what I give you, you might not like. Come on and give God a praise. There's people that wanted a certain person in the Kadabah, y'all better lift your hand, but they're going to give you what you want. Come on, lift your hand out of behind you. I dare somebody to give God a praise up in the, but you're going to cry a many a day. You're going to cry a many a day. You're going to cry a many a day. When they break his promise that he made to the people, you're going to cry a many a day. Lift your hand and shout glory in the house of the Lord. And so I'm not trying to get caught up in this world system. Come on, lift your hand. I'm not trying to get caught up in politics. Lift your hands. I know God spoke a certain person and then that he wanted to be in office. But because he, hallowed, he gave the people what they wanted. He gave the people what they wanted. Come on, lift your hand and shout, brother. America going to weep. America going to weep. America going to cry for day. Come on, lift your hands and shout, brother. Just like Apostle McCoy said, America's going to it looked like a third world country. He began to prophesy to it and tell us that there was going to be long food line. It was going to be people that were millionaires and all of the, the, the rich standing in, in the lines getting food. I heard from rich people with Mercedes and the Bahia. I'm on there with all of my daughter. The luscious car is standing in line to get something to eat. Come on, lift your hand and glorify God. Thank you, Lord. Come on, lift your hands. And so I, I, got to, I got to keep my mind. I got to listen. I know that there's things. He said, I know what you have need of. I don't want you worrying about that. I'm worrying about my soul. I'm worrying about my soul. I'm worrying about where I'm going to spend eternity. Come on, lift your hands. That's what I'm thinking about. I'm worrying about my children. I'm worrying about my grandchildren. I'm worried about my great-grandchildren. I'm worried about my son-in-law and my daughter-in-laws and all those that God has connected to me. That's so I'm worried about the church. I want the church to be right. I'm not worried about the money. I'm not worried about the bling bling. I'm not worried about the skyscraper. I'm not worried about the mansion. I want my soul right. I want Jesus. Lift your, oh, lift your hands and shout. I want Jesus. I want Jesus in this hour. I want to be able to stand in this hour. Come on and shout glory in the house of the Lord. Come on, praise us. I dare you to give him a praise. I dare you to give him a praise. I dare you to glorify him. I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied until I awaken his likeness. Hallelujah. The Job said, though the skin worm eat up my flesh, yet in my flesh, yet in my flesh will I see the Lord. I don't care what I go for, yet in my flesh am I going to see the anointing. Yet in myself am I going to walk in the glory. Yet in my flesh am I going to have power. Yet in my flesh am I going to walk in authority. I dare you to lift your hand and glorify God up in this house. I dare you to shout your victory down right now. I'm getting ready to get out of here. Come on, lift those hands and glorify God. And while I'm here in the book of St. Matthew, chapter number 6, verse number 33, he said, what I want you to do, I don't want you to be worried about the things of this world. Come on and shout glory. I don't want you to worry about what you're going to eat. I don't want you to worry about what you're going to put on, how you're going to be clothed. But what I want you to worry about and what I want you to think about is seeking my kingdom and my righteousness and then all these other things will be added unto you. I dare somebody to lift your hand and give the Lord a shout of praise in the house of the Lord. But what we've done to that scripture, we butchered that scripture so that we're thinking about the things. We're not worried about God. We're not worried about nobody else but me and myself and I. But I'm here to tell you that God is getting ready to bless his people. Long as you seek after him, you got a blessing with your name on it. Now lift your hands and shout yes. Lift your hands and shout yes. Come on, somebody give God praise. And he went all the way down. I don't even want you thinking about yourself. Come on and shout glory in the house of life. I don't want you thinking about tomorrow. I got all that in my hand. I dare somebody to shout yes. I dare somebody.
money to give him a praise up in this house. And so the Bible said, we're minor, listen here, we're minor and old minors. And major and listen, we're major and old minors. And minor and old majors. But what God is trying to say, I got something more present for you. I got something more present for you. I don't want to seek in things. I don't want to seek in fame. I don't want to seek in about how you're going to make it. But all things are going to work together for the good to them that love the Lord. To them that are the called according to his purpose. And what I want you not to do, I don't want you to have any fear. I'm not giving you the spirit of fear. I don't care what goes on in this world. I don't care what comes. I don't want you to fear. I've not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I dare you to throw your hands up and give God a shout of praise in this house. Come on, lift your hands. I'm not seeking at the corner thing for my flesh. I don't want my flesh to be glorified. I don't want my flesh to be gratified, but I want my spirit man to rise to the top. Lift your hands and shout glory. I want to walk on the high places of the earth and be fed with the heritage of Jacob, our father. Lift your hand and shout glory up in the house of the Lord. I doubt somebody lift your hand and give God a praise up in this house. Come on and praise him. And so the Bible makes an example about the kingdom. People don't know what the kingdom is. The Bible said the kingdom is within you. The apostle Paul picked it up in the book of Hadabahaya Colossians 1. Hadabahoyah, he's trying to bring us back to that place with God. He's trying to bring us back into the image and the likeness of God. The apostle Paul picked it up. He said there's a mystery that's been hidden from ages and generations, but now it's revealed to the saints. It's Christ in you. Christ in you. The hope of glory. I'm trying to bring you back to the beginning. I'm trying to bring you back to dominion. I'm trying to bring you back to power. I'm trying to bring you back to authority. But there's a mystery. I want you to pick up the mystery. It's what the apostle Paul said. It wasn't hidden from you, but it was hidden for you. Everybody can't get this. Only the elect can get it. Only those that are selected can find out who they are. Lift your hands and shout yes. Lift your hands and shout yes. Only those, amen, that's after me. Only those that's walking upright. Yet out of a house. Come on, I tell you to lift your hand and shout glory. I love you. Lift your hand and shout glory. Lift your hands 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 and shout glory. Yes! I tell you, lift your hand and give your God praise up in this house. Are you in the house of the Lord? I'm getting ready to get out of here. I'm getting ready to get out of here. But you don't understand who you have on the inside of you. You have tasted of the power of the world to come. You got God in you now. You need to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got God in you. What you're crying about, what you're wondering about, what you're worrying about, what you're worrying, what you're going to eat, why you're worrying, what you're going to put on, why you're worrying about what you're going to drink. I know you need this stuff. I I want you to get power. I want you to get power. I want you to get glory. I want you to know who I am. Yes. Yes. Come on and shout your victory down. Come on and shout your victory down. Come on and give your God a pray up in this house. Thank you, Lord. I dare you lift your hands and say thank you, Jesus. You don't understand. You don't understand. You got power over all the works of the enemy and nothing by any man shall hurt you. You throw the walk in prominence. You throw the walk just like God. You throw the walk over a problem. You throw the walk over self-standard. Lift your hands and shout glory. Yes! I dare you to shout glory. I dare you to shout glory. You don't know what you got. You got God in you. You got the eternal power on the inside of you. Lift your hands and shout yes. Yes. Can't nothing stop you. Can't nothing take you over. Can't nothing pull you down. Can't nothing walk over you. Can't nothing stop you from the blessing. Yes. Lift your hands and say yeah. Yeah. Come on, give God a praise.
come on praises come on praises they know not neither do they understand they go on in darkness the whole earth is out of court but I have said to you that ye are God and servants of the most high God but you shall fall like prison and die like men lift your hands and shout glory you don't know you got the power you don't know you're already an overcomer you don't know you're already successful you don't know you're already a winner you don't know you're already, you're already victorious over every circumstance over every problem yes come on and shout glory I dare somebody to lift your hand and shout glory shout glory in this house the glory is getting ready to fall the power is getting ready to fall there's going to be a rebaptism of the Holy Ghost in this house there's going to be a baptism of the Holy Ghost in power yes yes come on and give God a praise in this house it belongs to you it belongs to you yes come on and shout glory I'm not worried about the pain I got to have the power I got to have the power I got to have the Holy Ghost yes come on and give God a praise up in this house come on and praise it Come on and praise him. Come on and praise him. It ain't over. It ain't over. The power's in you. There's something on the inside of me that let me know it ain't over. I'm getting to go in a place where angels fear the trail. I'm getting to go to a place where the eagle have not seen. I'm getting to go to a place where the lion wept and not scrambled all. I'm giving to get in that secret place. I'm giving to get in that secret place where there's power. Where there's power. Come on, lift your hand. I'm going to that place. I'm going to that place of anointing. Yes, I'm going to that place where I can walk and tread on something. Yes, over sickness, over every problem, over every situation. Yes, come on and shout your victory down. Come on, praises. Come on, praises. Come on, praises. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the third book, the third chapter of the book of John, thank you, Lord Jesus, said Nicodemus, you must be born again, born of the water, born of the spirit. The wind blows, but listen, you don't understand where it's going, and you don't understand where it's coming, and that's the way the spirit of God, he'll have you in one place, and he'll anoint you and move you somewhere. You'll be in this place for a while, and the glory will come, and he'll move you somewhere. Out of the way in the floor, you went to that place with God. Lift your hands and shout, Yes, yes, yes. And the Bible says, Lift your hands and shout, Lord. If you endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Yes, 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 yes. I want to walk like it. I want to talk like it. I want to heal like it. I want to deliver like it. Lift your hand and glorify your God. Come on, praise us. Come on, praise us. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's talking about the Holy Ghost. He's talking about the Holy Ghost. He's talking about the Holy Ghost. Everybody can hear the voice of Jesus, the human mankind. He spoke to fish and fish got in the neck. He spoke to a tree and a tree died. Yes, he spoke to the wind and the wind obeyed him. He spoke to the waves and the waves obeyed him. But we can't obey. He speak to us and tell us what to do, but we won't obey. Every inanimate thing, every animal, every tree obeys God, but we don't obey God. But when we start obeying it, we'll walk in power. We'll walk in authority. Yes, yes, yes. I feel my help coming. I feel the glory. I feel the power. Yeah, yeah. Come on, lift your hands.
there and give your God a praise up in this house. Come on, praise him. That's why, that's why Jesus said, I don't want you going nowhere. I want you to go to the upper room and I want you to carry. You ain't got no business going anywhere until you got the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is leads you. He'll guide you. He'll teach you. He'll bring you remembrance. The things that Jesus said that he did, that he told you. He will comfort you and show you things to come. Is he showing you anything? He ought to be showing you something now. When you have got an intimate relationship with him, he'll show you things to come. He'll show you what's going on in your home. He'll show you what's going on on your job. He'll show you what's going on in the church. Yes. Come on and shout glory. I tell you to shout glory. He said you got this precious. The precious Holy Ghost. Yes. Don't grieve him. Don't quench him. Because that's the one that's giving you power to stand. That's the one that's bringing you out. That's the one that's holding you. Lift your hands and shout glory. Yes. Yes, I got a down payment now. I got a down payment now. But glory is coming. Glory is coming. I'm getting ready to walk like it. I'm getting ready to talk like it. I'm getting ready to operate like it. Yes, I dare you to shout glory. I dare you to shout glory. And I'm getting ready to get out of here. Come on and praise him. He said the kingdom of heaven. I got to get it. I got to walk in it. I got to operate in it. The kingdom of heaven is like a man that found treasure in a field. This is how precious it is. This is how precious he is. When I get him, there's nothing like it. I sell everything I got to get more of him. I go down and say, God, if you find anything in me, not like it. Strip it out. Lay the axe to the root and get rid of it. Because I want to rise in power. I want to rise in anointing. I want it out. I want it out. Take the lust out. Take the women out. Take the alcohol out. Take the drugs out. Everything in my life that's not like it. I want it out. I want to buy. Come and buy. Come without money. Come without price. And buy me. Lift your hands and shout glory. Come without money. Come without price. And buy of me. Come on, lift your hands and shout glory in the house of the Lord. And this man, he hides. He hides it in the earth. He hides it in the field because he knows more treasure there. And he said that's the way the kingdom is. It's like a man that found treasure in the field and went and sold everything he got to get this treasure. I sold everything I got to get the power of the Holy Ghost. I sold everything I got to walk in the anointing. I sold everything I got to have healing in my life. I sold everything I got to walk in victory. I sold everything I got to be successful in the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands and shout glory. Lift your hands and shout glory. It's not meat nor drink. It's not meat nor drink, but it's power and love in the Holy Ghost. You better look at your the other behind. You can't say he's here. He's there, but the kingdom is within you. And I begin to lay hands. I begin to speak. And the kingdom goes into operation. Lift your hands and shout glory. Lift your hands and shout glory. No, you're not. But your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And the apostle Paul said, it's a mystery right now. It's a mystery right now. But you got this hope of glory. You got the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. That's what he's trying to tell you. You got the hope of glory. You got the hope that's going to cause you to walk in the power. To walk in the anointing already inside you. Lift your hands and glorify God. Thank you, Jesus. So after, afterwards, afterwards, after I get the kingdom, after I walk in the power, after I can walk in authority, then these other things will be added unto me. Come on, lift your hands. Don't go nowhere. 
Don't go nowhere. But you tarry. You be endowed with power. Come on, lift those hands. Anybody want that power? Anybody want that authority? Anybody want to know what's coming? Katanabaya. The Lord spoke to me, has been speaking to me for the past three weeks. And it sounds so simple. But I'm going to tell you anyway, he told me to tell you new things are coming. New things are coming. New things are coming by the power of the Holy Ghost. Can I help you understand the Holy Ghost on the inside of us? You want the anointing? You want the power? But it's the Holy Ghost that takes you from glory to glory. From anointing to anointing by the power of the Holy Ghost. Without the Holy Ghost, you can't go to that next plateau. Without the Holy Ghost, you can't walk in power. Without the Holy Ghost, you can't walk in demonstration. But let me help you understand, it's for you and your children too. And those that are afar off that the Lord our God shall call. It's the power of the Holy Ghost that makes that lust get out of your life. It's the power of the Holy Ghost that takes that old demon that plagues your mind off of you. It's the power of the Holy Ghost that lets you know what your kids are up to. It's the power of the Holy Ghost, are you here, that lets you know where to go and where not to go, what to say and what not to say, what to do and what not to do. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. This might be a simple message, but we need him in this hour. Things are going to get so bad, you're going to have to have the Holy Ghost to direct you where to go to get food, direct you where to go to get your blessing, direct you where to go to get your necessary things to sustain life. Are you here? You say, I don't believe that. That's how bad it's going to get. But the church is getting ready to shine like lights. Come on, lift your hands and shout glory. It may affect the world, but it ain't going to affect us that much. Are you here? Because God's getting ready to drop something on us. He's getting ready to drop something on us that's going to cause us to live like kings and priests unto God. Y'all better lift your hand and glorify God today. We're getting ready to walk in such power. They're going to be calling for us from the government to come and give them a word. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. To come and let them know what's on the horizon. Are you in the house? It's going to be, listen, we're going to be so anointed. We're going to be so drenched with the presence of the Lord. Are you here? It's going to be just like Peter. They're going to have to put people in the streets because you ain't going to be able to touch them all. And when your shadow pass by, they'll be delivered from demons, sicknesses, and diseases, whatever it is. It's L and M. Can I help you understand that Jesus had the spirit without measure? What do you think about us? You don't just get a little bit of the Holy Ghost. You get everything that he is. You get all the power. You get all the power. You get everything that he is. And that's why I said, as I am, so are you in this world. Because you're going to have everything that I have. Listen, I'm believing and I'm praying and I'm seeking God for it. That God is going to use us, not just me. He's going to use us like we've never known before in this hour. Are you here? God is giving me to touch people. Touch people. Before you can get it out of your mouth, you're just thinking. God's going to, somebody going to be knocking on your door, bringing it to you. That's just how the Holy Ghost is getting ready to work in our lives. We get ready to get things without effort. We're not going to have to strain because we get ready to get in that place of relationship with God. Are you here? And God's getting ready to lavish himself upon us like never before. I wish I had a taker today. I wish I had somebody to say, sure, you're right, preacher. That's what I'm waiting on. I'm waiting on that power. I'm waiting on that glory. And not only that, he's going to give me power to live right. Most of all, that's what I want, power to live right. Anybody want power to live right? Anybody want power so they won't be up and down, in and out? That's what I want. I want power. Listen, I don't care about the things right now. I want something for my soul. I want to be just like him. I'm not worried about because if I get just like him, I can command things. I can decree things and let it be established. Come on, live it. He didn't worry about money. He didn't worry about clothes. People was always doing something for him because of the anointing. When the anointing is upon you, you can't help but be blessed. People are kept to try to find you and said, the Lord got me searching for you. I just got to bless you. 
I just got to bless you. And I'm not thinking that I'm down in a bag of chips. But I've gotten to the place, amen, the world people just want to bless me. Oh, you're in the house of the Lord. It's to the place. I'm not asking for it. I'm not asking for it. I don't ask people for anything. Hallelujah. I don't ask people for anything. But if God be God and I'm his child, I'm a servant, then he'll touch somebody's heart. Amen. To be a blessing. You a child. It ain't just for the preacher. It ain't just for the reacher, but it's for the saints of God. God don't put us in a place of you here where people can't help but bless you. They're going to call you and say, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I couldn't sleep last night. God told me to call you and tell you to come get this hundred thousand dollars because he said you had need of it. I don't know why I'm doing it, but God told me to call you and tell you I'm going to pay your house off. Are you in the house? I don't know what the bank called you. I don't know. I'm searching my records and I'll see in the records where your house is paid for. You don't owe us anything else. I don't know you. It's going to be the way if you need transportation. You ain't going to have to worry about it. Jesus said you're going to go and find a place. It's going to be a cold tied up there. I want you to bring it to me. And if the, if, the, if the innkeeper say anything, tell him that the master has need of it. You're going to go to the place in the world. You're going to go places and people just going to do things. They're going to lavish you because they recognize that you're a child of God and you done paid the price. You done paid the price in prayer. You done paid the price in fashion. You done paid the price in tears. Come on, lift your hands and say, you done paid the price in being faithful to God and now God wants to turn around and be faithful to you. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. He that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit, I've been sowing to the spirit. I've been sowing to the spirit. And because I'm sowing to the spirit, I'm going to reap life everlasting. And then the, the disciples told Jesus, Jesus, what are we going to get from following after you? He said, no man, I've left father, mother, sisters, brother, houses and land that won't be blessed in this world a hundredfold and in the world to come. Amen. Eternal life. But you're going to get it with persecution. Are you here? How many have been persecuted? How many have been going through? How are you about ready for your miracle. You about ready for your blessing. You didn't cry too long. People didn't lie on you too long. They didn't, didn't hate it on you too long. Are you in the house? Now you get me to stand up and people going to see that you've been called by the name of the Lord. There are people that keep on saying, where is your God? You're supposed to be children of a God but we're spreading like a brain break tree. Where's your God? All you have to do is tell them, just wait a minute. Just wait a minute. He's getting me to show up. He's getting me to show up. Now it's a set time for the favor of the Lord. You better lift your hands and shout, Lord. I dare you to open up your mouth and say, now is a set time for the favor of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, God's getting ready to favor me because I'm walking in the power. I'm, walk I'm not trying to consume it upon my own love, but I'm walking in the power. And because I'm walking in the power, God is getting ready to favor me. Lift your hands and give God a praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm not looking for money to consume upon my own loss. There's a widow that needs a house. There's children that need food. There's a single mother that needs a car. There's a single mother that's been struggling and she needs help. What would you do if God bless you? How would you help it? Because the Holy Ghost is getting ready to bring the blessings. The Holy Ghost is getting ready to open up the floodgates. And you get me to, oh good God Almighty, you get me to be blessed like never before. I saw it coming. I saw it coming. It's coming on God's people. And you ain't going to have to ask for it. All you have to do is ask for the kingdom. All you got to do is ask for the kingdom. Come on, lift your hand and ask for it. Come on, just lift your hand and say, Lord, stand to your feet and say, Lord, give me the kingdom. Lord, give me the kingdom. And because you ask for the kingdom. Guess what's getting ready to happen? Your children's getting ready to come home. Your marriage is getting ready to be blessed. Your job is getting ready to go to another level. Your mind is getting ready to get right. Your ministry is getting ready to go forward. Come on. Because you asked for the kingdom. You didn't ask for nothing but the kingdom. You didn't ask for money. You didn't ask for fame. You didn't ask for fortune. But you asked for the kingdom. And because you didn't ask for none of that, you're going to get it all. You're going to get it all. You're going to get the kingdom. And Everything else that comes with it. Lift your hands and glorify your God today. It's getting ready to happen, children of God. It's getting ready to happen. You've come into the kingdom for such a time as this. You have come into the kingdom for such a time as this. 
you don't know that all heaven is getting ready to break out. It's going to be just like when Jesus was talking to Nathaniel. He said, believe that I saw you when you was under the sycamore tree. He said, yes. He said, if you believe that. And this, Jesus is trying to show him something, trying to show him something. He's trying to show him this is what's going to happen to you. He said, because you believe that, you're going to see angels of sin and descend upon the Son of Man. Are you in the house of the Lord? And he's trying to show you that there's a portal getting ready to open up in heaven. And angels are getting ready to ascend and descend upon the people of God. You better lift your hands and you don't understand. You may not have everything you want. But all you got to do is hold on and hold out. We're yet a blessed people. We're yet a blessed people. Can I help you understand? We're right on the precipice. We're right on the precipice. There's so much sickness. There's so much thing, so many things going on with the people of God's bodies. There's all kind of sickness in our bodies. Can I help you understand? There's all kind of things happening to us, to the children of God. But can I help you understand, God, let me know. We're right at the place. We're right on the edge of what God said. I'm getting ready to heal them all. I'm getting ready to heal them all. I'm getting ready to heal them all. You say, well, I don't believe that. Read your Bible. There was times when Jesus, the crowds were with Jesus, and the Bible said that Jesus healed them all. And that's what's getting ready to do for the household of faith. God is getting ready to heal every one of us. There is no sickness. There's no disease that's too big. There's nothing that's so devastating that God can't heal. And God, I've talked to so many men of God. I've talked to so many daughters of Zion that have so many things going wrong in their bodies. But God said, I'm getting ready to heal them all. And can I help you understand? God showed me, and I told you a long time ago, and we're right at the place. He showed me in a vision. I was, I was, I was I had my eyes open. I was in bed. And, and I thought I was dreaming, but I was in a vision. And a vision is it's something real. You come out of this realm and go into the spirit realm. And I was laying on my bed and my wife was beside me. And a light came from heaven that shone over our whole bed. And I heard this voice say, lift your hands up in the air. I lifted my hands up in the air and fire. They begin to catch on fire. Are you in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah. And then he said, put your hands down. I put them down. He said, look at them. And oil begin to run out of my hand. And then he took me to another place where there was all kind of sick people. People, disease, had all kind of different infirmities, all kind of different sickness. And he said, lay hands on them. I'll begin to lay hands on them. And they begin to be healed instantly. God said, we're moving into that season when he's getting ready to put the fire on us. He's getting ready to lift the oil of the Holy Ghost run down upon us like never. Y'all better lift your hand. It's coming. you got to believe for this. You've been praying a long time. You've been fasting. You've been believing and trusting God for the anointing, for the miracle working power of God. And can I keep you with you got the tears running down from your face and you've been crying out to God and you're making it to the house of God as much as you can and you're seeking him with everything that you're seeking him with. You're the one that God's going to use. You may be just like a daughter behind a saw. Amen. You tried to hide behind the stump but God's getting ready to say go get him from behind the stump. I'm getting ready to use him. I'm getting ready to raise him up. You better lift your hand and shout God's getting ready to raise me up. If you've got that hunger and you've got that thirst on the inside of you, God is getting ready to raise you up. Just keep on seeking him. Just keep on praying. And in an hour when you think not, he's going to lift you up. Come on, lift your hand. He's going to anoint you. Don't let nothing get in your heart. Don't let nothing get in your heart. Don't make fun of a man of God. Don't make fun of Don't design. Don't make fun of nobody. Don't talk about nobody. Don't scandalize nobody. If you can't say nothing good about him, just say, Lord, bless him. Are you in the house of God? Because he's getting ready. He's getting ready. He's getting ready to move for those that don't have no other agenda. But Lord, what I want to do is to magnify your name. And he's getting ready to do it for his people. Lift those hands. And I'm getting ready to pray for you. And I'm stepping back. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for your people today, Lord. 
Lord, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that those that are suffering in their bodies, Lord God, they've been going through for a while, Lord God. There are, there are those that are going through spiritually, Lord God, going through financially, Lord God, going through in their marriages, going through in their homes, Lord God. But I release the power. I release the authority of the Holy Ghost. And I say in the name of Jesus, I command your situation to turn around. I decree and declare that your body be healed. I decree that you be delivered. I be de decree that you be set free in every area of your life. I decree that your ministry come forth. I decree that the power of the Holy Ghost begin to rest upon you. I decree in the name of Jesus this day that God, that God makes every step that you take greater and greater. I decree that the glory, the glory come upon your life. I decree as you go home, and you go home and you lay in your bed, that the Holy Ghost will begin to come and invade your sleep. He will come and invade your sleep. I decree and declare that somebody the Lord told me, hallelujah, as I'm praying, he said there's somebody, hallelujah, that the Holy Ghost has given me to come upon you, and your ministry has given me to change like never before. And I'm going to give you a sign. The sign is that the anointing is going to come upon you. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. And you're just going to be shaking and quickening. And it's going to be for an hour or so. You ain't going to be able to stop because of the glory is going to be upon you. But when that glory, when that quickening stops, then you get me to rise to another glory. You get me to rise to another place in the Holy Ghost. Is it anybody hungry for it? Is it anybody hungry for it? Is anybody been praying for it? It's going to happen for you. It's going to happen for you. It's going to happen for you. It's your hour. It's your season. And it's your time. Now, Lord, bless them, Lord. Bless your people, Lord. All the roadblocks, all the stumbling blocks, Lord God, moving out of the way. It's gotten so dark in some of their lives, Lord God. And it just seems like they're not going to be able to make it another day. But God, because it's so dark, because they're at a point, Lord, where it seems like there's no way out. They're right at the point. They're right at the last phase of that trial, of that tribulation. You get ready to bring them out. They get ready to stand up for you, Lord God. And the glory is getting ready to shine all around them. And I thank you this day, Lord. And I decree it. I declare it in their lives. In Jesus' name. And we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. And I want everybody just to give your Lord a great big old hand praise and give him a shout of praise up in this house if you believe it. If you believe it. Hallelujah. We get ready to let you go. We get ready to let you go.